Man, I can't. <laughs> I can't hit the right buttons this morning. My whole buttons thing, pushing thing is not working well. But anyway, I'm here. Happy to see you all. I'm Black Dragon. This is Black Dragon Biker TV, and I'd like to thank you all for tuning in from wherever it is in the world you happen to be. No matter wherever it is in the world you happen to be, I'm just glad that you are here with me today. Thank you, guys, and I appreciate you. Uh, look here. It is the weekend coming here. Will be the Black Sabbath 23rd year here in Atlanta, Georgia. We want you to come and party with us. Hang out with us this weekend. Um, give me a call at 404 336 and I'll tell you all about it, where to go, how to hang out with us this weekend. We'll be hanging out here at the Dragon's Lair at the East Coast Regional Clubhouse and uh, at the event center where we'll be doing our event. So come and check us out. I just want to get that out there before I got into today's story. And today's story, man, the federal government wants to seize the Grim Reapers Evansville's clubhouse, Evansville, Evansville clubhouse. This is, um, this is some interesting stuff. Let me see if I can't get uh, someone to bring that screen up for me. Appreciate that. And here's the article here, my friends. Uh, and I want to remind you all to subscribe, like, and share. If you wouldn't mind, subscribe, like, and share. There's somebody out there that uh, I'm sure might want to hear what we're doing. So share this with them. So the Courier Press, Courier and Press, says... The federal government wants to seize the Grim Reapers Motorcycle Club headquarters in Evansville. Now, let me tell you, ever since I've started this channel, there's been something like it's like almost like it's like every two years they're going after the Grim Reapers MC. Every like it's like every two years. You don't hear nothing. You don't hear nothing. Then, bam, they're driving through the front door of the clubhouse with one of them bearcat thing. And, uh, somebody told me I, I called it the wrong thing. You know, they said, no, Black Dragon, what you called it is a vehicle that can withstand mines. And that's not what that is. This is something different. And I was like, oh, okay, man. Whatever it is, they used one of them tanks to drive through their front door. Those guys been catching hell over there. Hell! Uh, it wasn't so long ago that somebody drove a truck through their front door and got out shooting. You guys remember that? Some dude, some some random dude just drove a truck through their front door. All right, now, Grim Reapers, bang, 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 bang. Uh, it was crazy. Of course, like a motorcycle club, they whooped his ass. But hey, you know, you know, yeah, he took the gun from him and yeah, pull cued his ass. But hey, that, those guys been catching hell over there. Hell, H-E-L-L. -L. Like every couple years, they just bring something new up on the, uh, you know, poor Green Reapers. Um, so uh, being motorcycle club, you know, people. We hate to see that happen. So here's the latest thing for those guys. Uh, like I said, like every two years. So now they want to take their whole damn clubhouse. And I've seen these kind of things happen before. This, I, I can remember in Los Angeles when they took a big one percenters clubhouse um, about, oh, my gosh, maybe 15 years, maybe 20 years ago, something like that. So here we go again. This whole civil asset forfeiture thing is crazy. They take your whole whatever, your, your pocket full of money you're driving down the road with, your clubhouse, whatever they want. So uh, after indicting and sentencing more than a dozen members of an Evansville motorcycle club accused of being affiliated with a large-scale methamphetamine ring, methamphetamine ring, how do you say that word, methamphetamine? 
uh, with a large methamphetamine ring, the federal government is now trying to seize the group's clubhouse. Zach Myers, who is a U.S. attorney for Southern District of Indiana, filed a civil complaint in December asking a judge to forfeit the building at 1104 East Diamond Avenue to the United States of America. Are you, are you serious? The United States of America wants my clubhouse? Don't they have enough stuff of their own? The civil case, which has featured an amended complaint and the dropping of a defendant is still winding through court. The civil case, which has featured an amended complaint and the dropping of a defendant, is still winding through court. That seems weird. The latest filing came on September 5th. The amended complaint issued in late June says the building is subject to forfeiture because, now check this out. Why do they want to take their building? Because it was used or intended to be used to commit or to facilitate the commission of drug trafficking offenses. What the hell does that mean? Is this the, what was that movie when, when, when they would arrest you for what they thought you were going to do? What, what, was, what was that damn movie? Um, they said, <laughs> because it was used, or if it wasn't used for the uh, commission of drug, and, drug offenses, it was intended to be used for the commission of drug trafficking offenses. It was used or intended to be used to commit, or if not to commit, the actual drug offense itself to facilitate the commission of a drug offense, drug trafficking offense. It just, it just seems shady as hell. Used to, or intended to be used to commit or to facilitate the commission of a drug. It, it just sounds like to me they're just saying, we're taking your building. We're just taking your building. We're just, we're just taking your building. That is absolutely, that's a lot. The civil case, um, is asking for that. It's the culmination of years of investigation, they say. The feds kicked off the criminal portion of the case in November 2019, like I said, every couple of years, when members of the FBI Drug Enforcement Agency and Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, among others, obtained a search warrant. Oh, you guys remember this? I just told you about this. And knocked the down the club's door with that, that, that truck thing, that personnel carrier, military warfare battlefield, but we're going to use it in the city thing. When it could have just probably easily knocked on the door. I'm sure they would have opened it. Uh, they reportedly seized 10 pounds of methamphetamines, 23 guns, $35,000 in cash, and even a few motorcycles. Like, what did the motorcycles do? The drugs themselves were reportedly had an estimated street value of more than $250,000. That all led to a bevy of indictments over the ensuing months and years. The latest sentence was handed down in February. Here, my friends, is a picture of the former Grim Reapers Motorcycle Club off Diamond Avenue in Evansville. I guess this is what they want to take. Uh, pretty decent-looking clubhouse. Um, you know, pretty standard in clubhouses. Uh, the front door doesn't look wide enough to pull motorcycles in to me, but um, I'm sure they, they, maybe they get them in the back door. Anyway, what the civil complaint says. Aside from the club itself, the main defendant in the civil side of the case is former Grim Reapers Motorcycle Club leader Gary Wayne Forston. He was sentenced in October to 16 and a half years in prison after he pleaded guilty to four of the 12 counts leveled against him, including disturbing, uh, distri distributing rather, methamphetamine and being a felon in possession of a firearm. He's currently serving his sentence in Texarkana, Texas, uh, Texarkana, Texas court record state. As part of his plea deal, which he signed in July 2022, is that a, like, is that a deal? When you like go to prison for 16 years, that, that was a deal? Yuck. But as part of that deal, 
which he signed on July 22, Forston agreed that the defendant property was subject to forfeiture and considered to the forfeiture of his interest in the defendant part, property. The amended complaint says. So this is why, personally, for motorcycle clubs, I always advise that you get the club in the club's name. Because a lot of times when you have people, individuals, that buy the club property or whatever, if they get into trouble or if they don't like you or if they die or if one of their relatives take over, whatever the case may be, the club can lose the clubhouse that the club has been paying for and all this kind of stuff because the individual dies, moves on, goes to jail or whatever. This has happened many times in the history of my own club. And we don't like individuals to have any stake in our club. And in this case, and, I've, and this has happened before with major clubs, in this case, as part of his, the uh, former president, as part of his plea deal, he agreed to give up his interest in the club. Whoever knows how much interest that was or whatever the case may be, but he agreed to the forfeiture of the clubhouse. So when they come in for the motorcycle clubs, they come in to destroy them. They want your colors. They want your clubhouse. They want to take everything they can to make sure you no longer, to make sure that you no longer exist. You feel me? So protection of the clubhouse is to get it out of any individual's name or set of individuals, however it may be. And, you know, that happens in clubs. Sometimes some of you lames don't have the credit or whatever the case may be, and it's all in one dude's name. But that is a, a weak point in motorcycle club houses, owning them or whatever. So as part of his plea deal, which he signed in July 2022, he agreed that the, uh, his property was subject to forfeiture and consented to the forfeiture of his interest in what they call the defendant property. And so prosecutors claim For, uh, Forston lived at the club while the meth ring was going on. So maybe he didn't have an owning interest in it at all. Maybe they just said it was his residence. And so because you live there, that's something to think about. Interesting that they would claim that because you live there, uh, that that was helping whatever they had against you. Then you might think about that if a club member needs to live in a clubhouse. And many times that happens. Prosecutors want the court to block the uh, Grim Reapers Motorcycle Club members from using the building and ultimately hand it over to the United States government. So because they say he lived there when the meth ring was going on, that they don't want the whole club to be able to use the clubhouse now that he's gone and uh, is gone on vacation. The Grim Reaper's history in Evansville area. According to Vander, uh, Vanderbilt County Assessor Records, the motorcycle club bought the building in 2017 after its former decades-long tenant, the exotic She Lounge Strip Club, closed up shop. Man, that is so cool that a motorcycle club would take over a former strip club. That's, that's, that's cool as hell. Members transferred into the group's home, painting the top of the facade, facade red and black. And now check this out. And brandishing it with the initials of the club, GRMC. Now, why is it brandishing if it's a motorcycle club? This is not brandishing their initials. It's a sign. If it was McDonald's, do they brandish the M's? The golden arches, are those brandished? Or do, or, no, those are just golden arches signs. They, they just paint motorcycle clubs in such a terrible light. They brandished. Brandished, did they? They brandished their initials. But everybody else, JB's Lawn and Garden, uh, lawnmower shop is not brandishing their initials. 
Man, the media, man. Ah, the media. Anyway. <sighs> anyway, they brandished their initials. I'm, I'm just, ah, just kills me. Anyway, brandishing it with the initials of the club, GRMC. It was just the latest home for the Grim Reapers who spent decades bouncing from one stri- tri-state spot to another. Uh, they just make it like you moving, you move to a different place. Like everybody moves, but we're bouncing from one tri-state spot to another. GRMC is a national group that formed in the mid-60s. Its <laughs> website lists chapters in Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee and promotes recent charitable rides. The tri-state chapter materialized in the 70s in Warwick County, inviting white men with Harley Davidsons to join. And they put white men in parentheses. And, you know, it, that's, a, that's a division. They, they try, division, that's like divisional. Yeah, so they only want white people in their clubs. So what? There are plenty of motorcycle clubs that only want that only let black people in. And I'm good with that. Be who you want to be. You know, let who in your club you want. It's your club. If you don't want me in it, I don't want to damn be there. They, all, they put white men in parentheses, inviting white men only. White men with motorcycles. All right. Anyway. White men with Harley Davidsons to join, and it almost immediately caused consternation among the locals. In 1977, Newborough, uh, Newborough, uh, is that how you say it? Newborough, Newborough, something like that. Residents erupted when the group rented this, the former, this and that shop downtown for meetings. After they were there a few weeks, town officials tried to give them the boot, claiming the building had been condemned after a fire. The chapter countered that if the building was condemned after the fire and it had still been rented to them, the town was actually putting them in danger. Club members dressed in leather vests and wearing long hair and beards make the residents apprehensive, and they wonder what goes on at the parties thrown at the club, an Evansville reporter wrote. The Reapers say the suspicions, anger, mistrust, and fears were unfounded. We like to ride and we like to party, one member told the press then. We're no different than anybody else. By 1981, the Warwick County Sheriff's Office raided a subsequent location and arrested more than a dozen members on alcohol and marijuana charges. The cases were eventually dismissed. And seven months before the 2019 raid in Evansville, a man rammed his truck, there it is, into the building, jumped out, clutching a gun, and fired at people waiting inside. Club members reportedly beat him back with pool cues, pool cues until police arrived. The man was eventually found guilty but mentally ill on three charges and sentenced to more than nine years in prison. So thus has been their lot there uh, in Evansville. And now they're trying to take their clubhouse. I, I don't know if that will succeed, but they're trying. This civil asset forfeiture thing is just out of control. I don't like it. That and a good RICO case, and they take all your SHIT. They just take it. Hmm. In other news, this guy right here, you might remember him. He was um, found guilty of a whole bunch of murders of old people. Well, his name was Billy uh, Shimmer, Shimmer, something like that. Shimmer, Shimmer. Oh, man, I, I, I just do a horrible job with these names. Shimmer, Shimmer, that's his name, Billy Shimmer. Anyway, he was killed in his prison cell. Yeah, this guy that suffocated a bunch of old people and took their rings and diamonds and stuff, and sold them for cash, got the same thing in prison that he did to other people. So that that should let you know that... Hmm? Convicted murder Billy Shimmer was killed in prison this morning. A spokesperson for the Dallas County District Attorney's Office told CBS News Texas, uh, Andrea Lucia. The Texas Department of Criminal Justice said he was found dead in his cell at the 
Cofield unit in Tennessee Colony. TDCJ says the cellmate who was serving a sentence for murder was identified as the person who killed him. Shermer was suspected of killing more than two dozen elderly victims across Dallas and Cullen counties. He will also take, or is that Collin counties? He would also take the jewelry of his victims and sell it for cash. In October 2022, a Dallas jury found Shermer guilty of capital murder in the death of the 87-year-old Mary Brooks. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole in April 22 after the jury found him guilty. Well, he's dead now. G-O-W-N. Gone. Damn the terrible, terrible, they used to say on the CB radio. G-O-W-N. Gone. Man. I don't think you should die in prison, though. I, I think I think there should be some kind of rule against dying in prison. Like, you shouldn't, they shouldn't be able to, like, commit the same crimes in prison that they commit out on the streets. Like, what good is prison? There should be some kind of way that they have of separating people. Like, maybe, like, is there a way to, like, put each person in a cube and prevent them from doing crimes to each other? Like, wow. Anyway, I mean, it kind of cheapens it. They wanted him to live for the rest of his life in prison, which I guess he did live for the rest of his life in prison, but it took away the punishment issue of it. The nerve of some people. This next story, <laughs> a disgraced mega, uh, mega preacher person, an evangelical person, wants to sue... The congregation, the, the church, because his extramarital affairs were let out. <laughs> I think this is interesting. Over the years, countless evangelical religious right fundamentalists, from Jimmy Swagger to Jerry Falwell to Jim Baker, I remember all those people. Like, I used to watch their shows a little bit. I remember all those people. Don't you remember all those people? Jimmy Swaggered. I have sinned. You guys are too young to remember that. Jerry Falwell, Jim Baker. They were all caught. Jimmy Swagger. It was bad. They were caught with like extramarital affairs, prostitutes, or whatever. I remember them. They were all caught up in major sex scandals. And a lot of times it didn't even hurt them. They still went on, on, on to do their thing. Another one of those guys is Johnny Hunt, who headed the Southern Baptist Convention. For, before taking leave of absence in 22. Religion News Bob uh, Smienta, Smi, Smitana, in an article published on September 18, explains on July 25, 2010, while vacationing in Florida, that Hunt had kissed and fondled another pastor's wife in what his attorneys would later call a brief but consensual extramarital encounter. Not even an affair, but a kissing and fondling encounter. Then Hunt spent more than a decade covering the incident up. That little bitty thing, incident, man. Uh, Smitana notes that Hunt has filed a civil lawsuit against the SBC's executive committee and guidepost and argues that they should have not, should not have publicly discussed his behavior and that his privacy was invaded. Uh, but George Freeman, executive director of the Media Law Resource Center, believes Hunt's privacy claims in the lawsuit are flawed. According to Smitana, the former SBC president's defamation claim could have more some merit if the allegations against him are proven false. But even then, Freeman said Hunt, a prominent, a prominent evangelical leader and speaker, would likely qualify as what they call a public figure. Why do I bring this up? It's for you, Motorcycle Club presidents. Look, bro, there's an expectation that you're going to do things the right way. There's an expectation that you're going to be better than your baser instincts as a leader of people. You don't get no damn privacy. Yeah, you, you don't. When you become the leader, of people, 
There's an expectation. You're going to do the damn thing right. At all times. We expect you to lead. If you're an evangelical preacher, we don't expect you to be having no chicks on the side, no prostitutes and whores. We don't expect you to be whoring in the local strip club. I said that when I did my video about the uh, Christian MCs, not 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 necessarily MCs that profess Christianity, but the ones that are the in, the the evangelist ones who go out to win souls for the Lord. We don't expect to see you in the in the club tipping it up with the rest of us, hollering at the the whores on the little stages, rolling up and down the uh, poles that we put up. We almost expect you to walk in and look away. Look away. That's what we'd be expecting. We're not, we're not expecting you to act like that and then be wanting to thump a Bible at us and telling us how we should change our ways in the MC world and accept Christ and stuff like that. We expect you to be leaders in that. We expect you to be Christ-like if you're going to be Christians running around the motorcycle set trying to win souls. You got to kind of act like it. That's why I don't be trying to, because, you know, y'all would probably be like, you throw a black dragon out, you tar and feather his ass. These things we know. So how can the evangelical preacher be trying to sue somebody? Bro, you was foul. It's just like the motorcycle club president when he's foul. And some of you motorcycle club presidents are foul in some of the things you do. And when they find y'all out, you need to be run out of the MC. When you take the responsibility of leadership, you set an example, or you should be. You know or you should know that your example will be followed by others. We're expecting you to be held at a higher standard. When I was in the United States Navy, I was a operator of nuclear weapons. My job was to uh, shoot nuclear weapons. And I did get to shoot some. It was cool. They weren't the, the real thing. <laughs> but we got to shoot the missiles without the real thing on them. And it was cool. But... When you belong to that program, there were certain, like, rules. We, we belonged to a program called the Personnel Reliability Program. So, you know, they had shrinks looking at you and stuff. I can remember when I first went into the PRP, they made, they made us draw a picture, whatever you want to draw. And I, I don't know what they, what they decided that you were after you drew this picture, but I'm sure that picture probably would get some people thrown out. Like if you drew a picture of a man strangling a cat, <laughs> you, they might be like, oh, no, 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 bro. No, you're not good for the nuclear weapons program. You're not a personnel reliability person. Out of here. I drew like a Captain America. I was a kid. You know, I was young in my teen, uh, in my young years, just joined the military. I drew like this picture of a superhero flying in a cape. I guess that was that was good enough. They didn't kick me out of the program. Certain things you had to have. You had to have, like, your taxes had to be right. You couldn't owe money to anybody. Um, you had, like, this top secret security clearance. So they, they, they were looking at your behavior. They sent, uh, you know, to get that security clearance, they sent people back to my hometown to ask about me. People that they went to my neighbor's houses. And what kind of kid is this? And was he ever in any trouble? They, they actually sent people back. There was an expectation. And you couldn't even get a DUI. If you got a DUI, they put you out of the Navy. Other branches in the Navy, you'd get a second chance and all this kind of stuff. Not if you were in the personnel reliability program. You were supposed to be trustworthy with them nukes and them top secrets and all that. That's why when I see these big-time 
uh, presidents and secretaries of state and all this stuff mishandling top secret information. It pisses me off because we would have gone to prison for that. Straight to prison. I have no sympathy for a senator or something mishandling uh, secrets. I have no sympathy. I, I know, and I had plenty of buddies who lost careers behind small screw-ups. I'm trying to tell you guys that there is a higher level of expectation when you serve your brothers, when you serve your country, when you serve your fellow Americans or fellow whatever countrymen you are from, or when you are serving as a uh, a, a religious figure or whatever the case may be. And a, a, a motorcycle club president is serving in all those capacities. You're a counselor. Some people look up to you like you're almost a, a father figure. You're a, you, you, people are almost religious with how they treat their presidents. People, that's my president. When I was a national president, that's my national. They said it almost like, that's my pope. That's my father. That's, they, they come to you with everything. Relationship problems, financial problems counseling, uh, 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 post-traumatic stress disorder. They come to you with everything, stuff that you're not particularly trained to even know how to deal with. And what they're expecting from you is leadership by example. Leadership by example. They're expecting the 14 scientific principles of leadership that you'll find in my book, President's Bible. I just found a way to segment into that. I don't know where that came from. But anyway, they're looking for leadership from you. Leadership, fairness, proper judgment. And they're not looking for you to call claim foul when you screw up. When you screw up, they're looking for you to say, I'm sorry. I'll find a way not to do that again. Or I'm sorry and I'm stepping down because what I did uh, does not hold the values of the MC. And that is the lonely part of leadership that you take on when you say, I do. I will. I will abide by the, const by the uh, constitution of this MC. I will abide. Pick me. I will lead you. Pick me. The hell out of here. Wants to sue because they publicly talked about what a piece of garbage he was for preaching one thing and doing another. I've been a leader in a motorcycle club for a long time. And I promise you they're looking. They're watching everything you do. And they're evaluating it. And they're looking at your shortcomings. And they will accept you being short. If you're honest. If you admit to it. And if you try to be to do better. But if you try to pull the bullshit over these people's eyes, bro. They'll eat you alive. Honestly, they will. It's okay with them that you're human. It's not okay that you're a hypocrite. <sighs> well, that's my two cents. Did I, did I like go off on a rant or something? I did, didn't I? Uh, I'm seeking counseling, honestly. Uh, so listen, this weekend, we are going to be partying in the Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. Here in, um, here in Atlanta. And we really would like it if you would come and hang out with us. Uh, it, it would just really be, we'd really appreciate it. So let me bring this screen up here. We're having our 23rd anniversary. I know it says 22nd, but it is the 23rd anniversary. It's going to be at the Lindell's Event Center uh, at 2260 Lake Harbin Road this Saturday. 
And 2260 Lake Harbin Road in Morrow, Georgia. And if you'd stop by and see us, we'd appreciate it. Tickets would be $15 at the door. Um, and if you if you want a ticket in advance, you can still get one. Just hit me up at dollar sign biker prez with your $10, and we'll have your ticket waiting for you at the door. $50 if you want a table. It comes with a bottle. I don't I don't know what the bottle of. It'll be a bottle of, but it'll be a bottle that it comes with. And we'd love to have you guys here to hang out with us. Now, on Friday night is our meet and greet, it's called. The meet and greet is free. Uh, it's going to be at 2349 Memorial Road in Atlanta, Georgia, at the East Coast Regional Clubhouse here in Atlanta. And then, of course, over here at 3393 Lawrenceville Highway, Building 2, Tucker, Georgia, we'll be, we'll be having folks, whoever wants to come and hang out at the Dragon's Lair, which will be open for you guys. So we'd love to see you. For more information, hit me up at 404-692-0336 if you want to come and hang out. We'd love having you here. It would be a very much very cool. Also, you guys should know that MC Protocol Bike Night Tuesdays happens at the Black Dragon's Lair at 3393 Lawrenceville Highway, Tucker, Georgia, Building 2. We'd love to see you here on Tuesdays. We're behind the furniture store across the street from the U-Storage, down the hill, in the cut, behind the gate. We're hard to see from the street, but come hang out with us. Tuesday night bike nights, man. We do MC protocol from 6 to 7.30, and then from 7.30 on is bike night. You know what I mean? So, love to have you guys come check us out. That's my two cents today. Um, make sure that every day you do your testing with your meter. You do your testing with your meter every day. It's really easy. Um, you take your medicines every day. You do your blood pressure on your blood pressure cuff. We're going to do this together. We're getting older. I'm 60. And a lot of you guys are heading close to my age, so we're getting older. And we're going to do these things together to stay healthy, wealthy, and wise. We're going to be losing weight. We're going to be focusing on our bodies, walking our 10,000 steps a day. These are the things necessary to live. <laughs> All right. Listen, I'm Black Dragon. That's my two cents. I would love to hear your two cents in the comments section below. Hey, if you enjoyed today's show, hit me with a pound we MC. Pound we MC. Somebody says, I was wondering, does the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation not have a chapter in the Bluegrass, the Bluegrass State? Is that Tennessee? Is that the Bluegrass? Where's the Bluegrass State? I'm... Is that like Tennessee? I would think it might be Tennessee. Uh, and if that's the case, no, we don't have one there yet. Not yet. So. Uh, we're trying to get there. We want to be everywhere in the world. So where there are seven qualified men, it's where we'll start a Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club. Always keep that in mind. All right, seven qualified men who want to live, breathe, and love motorcycles under the way the Black Sabbath does it, a breed apart. Hit us up, bro. We'll be glad to check you out. All right, take care and get skinny. Prepare yourself to take the helm as president of your mighty motorcycle club by delving into the pages of Black Dragon's newest book, The President's Bible, Chronicle One, Principles of Motorcycle Club leadership. There you will learn to advance your skills in applying the 14 scientific principles of leadership similar to those taught to officers in the United States Naval Service. Available in hardcover, paperback, and ebook, get yours today on Amazon, Kindle, or order it at your local bookstore. Order your autographed copy from blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club president you can be. Get the book. Kentucky? How, how was I supposed to know that that's the, like, bluegrass state? Like, I'm not like your 
your like bluegrass listener every day. Although I do like bluegrass music, but no, I didn't know that Kentucky. No, we don't have a chapter in Kentucky yet, but we'll go there. Don't think we won't go to Kentucky. <laughs> The bluegrass state, uh, the bluegrass state, everybody knows that. Everybody but me. <laughs> Take care. Get Black Dragon's first book, The Prospects Bible, to learn how to join a motorcycle club. It has been an Amazon number one bestseller for the past seven years and is required reading for over 3,000 motorcycle clubs worldwide. This book is a must-have for new people venturing onto the motorcycle club set. It will teach you how to prepare yourself for service to the motorcycle club nation and show you how to qualify a motorcycle club to be worthy of your service. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and for order at your local bookstore. Get your autograph copy at blackdragonsgear.com. Be the best motorcycle club prospect you can be. Get the book. Thank <laughs> you.